Hi everyone, I'm Mark Camby and I'm here at Lamplighter Ministries. And I just wanted to say thank you. Um, as we close out the year 2021 and begin the new year, um, I wanted to uh, say thank you, not just for your support, but thank you for your encouragement. Uh, this year was the best year of my life. There's several reasons for it. Number one, uh, God, he's just, he's amazing, amazing God. Uh, two, Jesus is coming soon. There's just no question in my mind about that. The culture is unraveling immorally, unethically, in every way, educationally. But praise be to God, He has given us something here that is so unique. Um, able to take stories and teach biblical truths, deep biblical truths that are based on Romans 5, 2 Peter chapter 1, Proverbs 22, Proverbs 1 through 9. Um, I just praise God. So many things to be thankful for. And uh, you are a large part of that. And so, before this year ends, I wanted to share something that I think will be an encouragement. It's found in uh, 3 John. It's only one chapter. And um, I, I put part of it on the board here. Um, and we're going to just kind of study it together just for a few minutes as my way of saying thank you. Um, God's doing a work here. Uh, as I said, it was the best year of my life. The collegiate program that God has allowed us to start. Um, the students that are here, we're up to about 15 students now. What a blessing. Uh, seeing their lives being molded and shaped into the character of Christ. Um, Lamplighter Theater, we were able to do two dramas this year. We just finished um, one called King Jack. Can't wait till you hear it. It's going to deal with uh, a young young boy that has anger issues and how he resolves that, those tensions. Um, we were able to print uh, nine new books this year and God has just given us seven new books to print already for 2022. I can't wait till you read the new, the new stories. Um, as God is um, giving us these stories that are based on suffering, producing endurance, producing character, producing hope, so that we can experience God's love. Um, I can't think of any, any greater way to spend my life. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I, I'm, I'm gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you. And even if I'm loved less, I will spend it all. And that's how I feel. And so uh, thank you for um, being a partner in this ministry. Uh, John said, I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in truth. But not just truth, truth with love. Uh, truth without love is just rules and legalism. And love without truth is just hypocrisy and liberalism. It's, it's, there are no rules and regulations to one's life. You can do anything you want. In the, in the Apostle John, at the end of his life, he's around 90 years old. He's in kind of a prison camp. And uh, he can't really write about Jesus. In fact, this book here, 3 John, if you read it, Nowhere does it mention the word Jesus. And the reason for that is because um, the people who were going to read the letter would be in danger. And um, the Romans were looking out for them. And so in 3 John, what is unique about this book is that seven times the word love appears and the word truth appears, seven times each. And there's a reason for that. If you look at it, I've, I've charted it out structurally. Um, beloved, um, the word love is in the word beloved. I, I like. I like reading the word beloved as be loved. And um, if, we're, if we're loved, um, then we know that we can love others. I just had someone call me just a few hours ago um, asking me um, my advice on a situation that he was having with uh, a young man that um, felt like um, he was being mistreated and um, felt like his reputation was marred a little bit. And, and as uh, we were talking it through, um, this man had the truth and um, he needed to speak the truth, that was important, but he needed to speak it in love. Love in truth. And that's what John says here. Beloved, beloved Gaius, he's, he's John's servant, and he's so important to John, he calls him the beloved. Beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Um, as we begin this new year, we have a promise that love never fails. Um, when in doubt, try love. I, that's one of the reasons I love Teddy's Button is one of our best books for children. Um, he learns that you don't win the enemy with hate, you win the enemy with love, and your greatest weapon is love. Uh, so beloved love, whom I love in the truth, a beloved truth. Now this whole framing device here is important because you've got beloved love truth, and here you've got beloved truth truth. And what he does is he reverses this framing device. Be loved truth, truth love. And so again, he reverses the framing, and in the very center, you've got truth, truth, love, love. You can't miss this. You know, when you're reading this, it's like you're reading not just the words, but you're reading the beauty of it, the structure of it. 
and he places truth twice and love twice in the very center of this letter. Not only does he structurally give us this, this form that teaches us how to live our lives, the, the very last thing that John's going to write is the book of Revelation, but this is his last letter. And in this last letter, he's focusing on how he wants us to live our lives in truth and love. It's a very delicate balance, very difficult balance, because if you're, if you're living in the fear of man, um, then you will not be apt to tell the truth. If you're living in a selfish state, then you'll be more apt to tell the truth without love. And so John brings this balance together here of truth and love. And that's a very important um, point. Um, who do you fear? As we go into 2022, if, there's a, if, if we're living in fear of anything other than the fear of God, which is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, then um, we're, we're going to have a difficult time speaking the truth. If we're more apt to let anything go and, and not deal with situations, then we're going to be more apt to just love but without the truth. And so John brings us into perspective with four people. The first one's Gaius, his servant whom he loves. The last one is Demetrius, another servant whom he loves. He places the two servants of God at the very end of, of this letter. And in the middle, he places two people. Diotrephes, whom he says loves the preeminence. He's always got to be first. He has the last word. In fact, he kicks people out of the church if they support John and John's fellow workers. Um, he's, a, um, he's a dictator. Um, he doesn't like to be told no, and he doesn't receive correction at all. That's one of the ways that you'll know a person's growing in their life. They embrace correction. They might not like it at first, but they turn and they embrace correction. One of the most important lessons for our children is to turn when corrected. And God says in Proverbs 123, if we turn when we're corrected, He'll pour out His Spirit and He'll make known His words to us. That's one of the ways that God's Word begins ignited in, this, in a person's life. Um, it, the flame grows because a person now is receptive to correction and God says, now I can, I can work with a person like that. And so, Diotrephes, he doesn't like to be corrected. He likes the preeminence. And then you have this word, fellow helpers. Um, as soon as I read it, I thought of you. And, and this is what I want to share with you as we close this year out. The fellow helpers are uh, someone who are sharing in the ministry. In fact, if you studied it in Greek, um, receive these fellow helpers because they are one and the same. They are equal, of equal value. Your support of us through prayer, through your financial giving, you are one and the same with us. Um, it's really something because when gifts come in here at Lamplighter, um, when people come in, volunteer, when people are praying for us, we can tell. In fact, one time this past year, um, I asked uh, Sarah to send out a prayer letter um, we were going through some heavy artillery here. You could tell when the enemy's after you. And uh, it got worse. You know, usually when we send out a prayer SOS, um, you could tell that God just begins to rescue us. But this one time, it got worse. And I said, send out another prayer. Send out another prayer request. And uh, when we went to look at it, the first one was never sent. And uh, as soon as we sent out the second one, we, we could just see God protecting us. Sometimes I just kind of envision, you know, not just in my own imagination, I envision angels um, in armed, you know, with armed array, you know, with swords drawn. I just picture them around our entire, entire campus when we send out a prayer letter. So your prayer support is essential. These, this word, fellow helpers, is the idea of what Jesus said, that when you, when you receive a prophet in my name, you will receive a a prophet's reward. When you receive a righteous man in my name, you will receive a righteous man's reward. The, the people who are doing the work and the people who are supporting it, John is saying they're one and the same. Um, they're not just fellow helpers. They're participating in the ministry as if they were there. It's an amazing word. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for helping us to give the truth in love. We feel like you're actually here with us. That's the way it, it seems. That's the way we sense it. Um, we're not doing this ourselves. God has raised up an army uh, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And I just want you to know that I'm extremely heartfelt thankful for you. One last thing. If you haven't seen the end of the year video that summarizes 2021, please take a look at it. It is... Um, the heartbeat of what took place here at Lamplighter Ministries because of you and because of what God did beyond anything that we could have ever expected. Um, he did exceedingly abundantly above all that we could have asked or thought. 
And so I, I wish you not just a happy new year, but a blessed new year so that we might know God intimately, proclaim Him passionately, and enjoy Him infinitely. God bless from all of us here at Lamplighter Ministries.